Hey, 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 hey. We're loving people. Sometimes I check myself for a meeting, eh? call myself for a meeting, whatever. Uh, either buy myself or whatever I can buy myself as I think about this, but most of the time it's when I'm walking. There's this issue, again, with us Christians. The issue of the anointing oil. I don't know why we have given a lot of an em emphasis and power on the anointing oil more than the word of Christ and Jesus himself. We give the anointing oil the power and the word of God has power to do everything. I know most of you will come and ask me, but there is the use of the anointing oil in the Bible. Yes, there is in the Old Testament. And there is the mention of the anointing oil in the New Testament. It's only mentioned once, I think, in the New Testament. Yes. This is when James is calling unto, saying, if you, any one of you seek, uh, call the elders to come and anoint you and all that. That was more of, uh, more of the Hebrew culture and all that. I'm not saying that uh, that's more of the Hebrew culture and all that. But uh, this world has me so much, or makes me think twice uh, about all these things so much, is the idea of the people who sell the anointing oil, and they are prayed for it, and then if you buy them at a given amount of money, it will go and chase away demons in your house, it will chase away the troubles in your house, it will do all these other things and all that. But uh, that's a marketing strategy of each and every person. Then, why should you buy, uh, why should you buy the Eliando cooking oil? then put it in small bottles then call it anointing oil doesn't make any sense i know that's what most pastors do let me not get myself into it, but it's just wrong for you to do that what i'm trying to say is the word of god and the word of god is just as complete as it is it doesn't need you to help you to do anything in any way just do whatever it tells you and you'll get the results as the word of god says it should it's in case they are demons anyway it's in the name of Jesus Christ that the demon shall flee. The name of Jesus Christ that the demon shall flee. It's not in the name of the anointing that you're given by like, whichever man of God that is demons. Demons don't obey the anointing. They obey the voice of prayer that is in you. They obey the spirit of God who lives in you, not the anointing oil. Not even these posters. I'm a flyer that you're given to go and stick on your, on your car. Like you just buy your good car like this one. Then another foolish man of God or woman of God <laughs> sells you a stick at 30,000 or 10,000 or 5,000 or 1,000. Then he asks you to go and stick it on a, <laughs> your car and it will protect your car. Then a fool like you, not me, I'm not a fool because I don't do that. A fool like you, I'm sorry to call you a fool, of course you are. A fool like you, you buy it and then you stick it over here. Then you think it's that sticker that is protecting you. What's the difference between that man, who calls man of man, and the woman of God that you call a man of God with a witch, a witch doctor? Which doctor will give you uh, something to go and tie somewhere to protect yourself from uh, dangers and all that? Jesus wants us to be free in everything. And he's giving us better options to solve our problems. Who is just him? Calling unto him each and every time. And your issues are solved. Why can't we be brave enough? Why can't we, can't we be wise enough? And to just walk in obedience with him? That which Christ is calling us unto do. Leave alone this full of the laws of the anointing oil, you holy water, send you whatever. And the other people say, even Paul prayed for the for the handkerchiefs and he gave them out and the people are healed. I'm not disputing that. That was true. But, but did he sell them to anyone? He never sold them to anyone. He gave them out for free. Yes, I know even there are those who touched on Paul's cloak and they were healed. Yes, that's very true. But we cannot compare Paul again with the men and women of God that we are seeing in this world at this moment, whatever is happening. I'm not saying that they are, they are not true men of God. I'm one, uh, true men of God. So I'm not saying that they are not there, they are there. But how do we really know who is a man of God, who is not a man of God? And the Bible gives us a way out on the same again. It says that by our fruits we shall be known. The Spirit of God who lives in you will convict you on what is good and what is wrong, what is sinful and what is not sinful. And he will tell you whether that man of God is a true man of God is not a true man of God. And he will guide you in each and everything, in all the truths about Christ Jesus. Okay. Then why do you need anointing oil and all these posters and all these flyers and uh, t-shirts written, written on the name of the, those men and women of God you're calling, uh, throwing uh, oranges and whatever they are throwing all around to make you feel that they are more powerful. It's more of, uh, it's more of, uh, it's more of comic, it's more of, uh, more of drama, more of, more of movies that you're watching because they're never true but people still follow them and they enjoy doing them. That is not the sense of everything. Someone, someone told me, for us, the children of God, miracles, miracles are not for us. Miracles for the non-believers. You wonder, all these people we see in all these buildings we call churches, they are non-believers because they are following miracles. Miracles are for non-believers to believe that Christ is powerful. But for us who are in Christ already, 
we come from a home of miracles. Where we come from is where miracles come from. Then why are you looking for a miracle? It doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense at all. What I'm trying to say is, rather obey the word of God and do what the word of God is telling you to do than buying that anointing oil. Because that anointing oil, itaisha, itabidu menda kununua ingine. Manufacture of the Eliando oil, eh? It's benefiting more. All these things will be way. Being a Christian <laughs> doesn't mean that life will be so okay for you, everything you need, <laughs> wherever you go, you'll get whatever you want, and you'll go to the US. By the way, what? Who? <laughs> Shit. Why did I forget this? Who told every Christian in Africa that <laughs> prosperity is in the US? So if a pastor prophesies that you're going to the US, it's be powerful man of God, powerful man of God. Like, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. There's some of us who will stay in Kenya and live in Kenya for the rest of your life. There's some of you who live in your country for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean that you're not blessed. And blessing is not you having all the cars that you want or good houses that you want and going wherever you want to go, wherever you want them to. Christ doesn't promise us that. In fact, Christ promises persecution. He promises us that we be persecuted. We are like sheep among the wolves. What does a wolf, what does a wolf do with, to a sheep? Devour the sheep because that's what is happening. Persecutions will be there for the sake of his name. That's the promise that Christ is giving us. If you're a Christian and you believe everything will just be new for you, all the roles will be laid flat for you and all these other things, stop lying to yourself and come to the reality. And the reality is there will be problems. And those problems can only be solved by Jesus. No one else can solve them. No pastor, no man of God, no woman of God will solve those problems for you. It's Jesus. And remember this, when he opens a door, no one shuts that door. And when he shuts it, no one will ever, ever open that door. But it's all up to us to believe and trust in God and walk according to the will of God. Letting the Spirit of God to teach us and guide us in each and everything, we will get it right. But the moment we think we can help God to do his work, we miss it. Think about that. Take your time and think about that. Leave a comment if you want. And if you feel whatever I'm trying to say is not good for you, please just leave it. Continue doing whatever you're doing. It's you who will perish, not me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.